friends, I hope you're all doing well and welcome to the second part of our Microsoft Excel lesson. Now, before we begin, here are just a few reminders for us to follow whenever we are using our computers. Stretch every 20 minutes. Sit straight with both feet on the floor and make sure your eyes are about 2 feet away from the screen. When we make all of this a habit, we can avoid body aches and we can also do our work better. So before we continue with our objectives, let us first have a review of our lesson from last week. Okay, show me a thumbs up if the activity needs Microsoft Excel to be created and thumbs down if not. Next, I'm going to point at the different parts of Microsoft Excel window and then try to name these parts. Ready? Okay, so let's get going with our objectives for this week. First, we will create a Microsoft Excel spreadsheet. B. Enter and edit data in a spreadsheet. And we will also save Microsoft Excel spreadsheet. You can open Microsoft Excel by following the steps below. Click the Start button. Click All Apps. Click Microsoft Office and click Excel. You can also use the search box just beside your Start button. So I just opened Microsoft Excel. Can you tell me the name of the active cell? That's correct. The selected cell which is outlined is called the active cell. So right now we can only input text or data in cell C4 unless we select on other cells. Now, there's another part of your Microsoft Excel window, which uh, I'd like us to know. It's the Worksheets tab. It's located on the lower left of the window. This displays the worksheet that we are currently working on. We can add a worksheet by clicking the Insert Worksheet button. So now we have a fourth one. If you need another worksheet, you just have to click it again. Now what if we would like to delete a worksheet? Say, uh, let's remove uh, sheets 5 and 6. Simply move your mouse over the worksheet tab, right click, then select delete. Okay, let's remove this uh, worksheet also. There. And we can also rename each worksheet. For example, let's go to sheet 1. To rename a worksheet, you may double click on the sheets tab, erase that, and then type the new name. So let me just put sample on this for our lesson. Okay, and then just press enter if you're done. To enter data in our spreadsheet, click on the cell that you need. For this example, cell A1. Type the data. Then if you're done, just press the enter key. Another way is to click on the cell, then type inside the formula bar. Press enter. What if we want to edit the content of the cell? Just like this, we would like to correct the spelling. 
To do that, simply double click the cell and you may use the arrow keys on your keyboard to move the cursor. Okay, edit the text. Once you're done, press the enter key again. So let's just try to type some more on this column. So this is about the lower grades population and we need the grade levels and of course the number of students. If you notice grade level, the word level seemed to disappear. Okay, however, it didn't. If you click on that cell, grade level still appears in the formula bar. It's just that it didn't fit in the column width. So to resize the column, click the right side of the column and then drag it to the right. If you want to move it farther, Simply click and drag it to the right again. Let's do the same with number of students. Now that I'm done typing the data in my worksheet, I'd like to put borders so that I can clearly see the outlines of the cells. To do this, we have to highlight the needed cells. Click and hold your mouse. Then drag it over the needed cells. Okay. If you notice A1 does not have the same color as the rest, okay, because that's the first cell that we selected, but it's still part of what we have highlighted. After highlighting the cells, click the drop down arrow of the borders command in the font group. Then click all borders. Now we can clearly see the outline of our cells. I hope you're still feeling okay. So now we will learn how to merge cells. When we merge, we combine cells to become a single cell. So let me demonstrate it on this part. For example, I'd like we'd like to merge these three cells. E2, E2, and F2. To do that, simply highlight the cells, then click the drop down arrow of the merge and center command, which is found in the alignment group. After that, click merge and center. So now, the three cells a while back, they was joined together and became a single cell. Let's try to do that with uh, lower grades population. Let's merge cells A1 and B1. So select the cells, click merge and center. Okay. Now the merge and center command is usually used to create labels that cover multiple columns. So in this column, like the grade level and then the number of students, both are about the lower grades population. To give your spreadsheet a better look, you may also use your knowledge of using the commands in the font group and the alignment group. So if you want to change the color of the text, for example, you simply have to click the cell, then select the color that you one okay and uh, you may just format the text okay, or even the alignment another command in the font group is the fill color okay so this colors the background of the selected cells so for example this cell i'd like to fill it with color yellow Another feature of spreadsheets like Microsoft Excel is its ability to sort and filter data using the sort and filter command in the editing group. This allows us to arrange data so we can easily analyze them, like arranging them alphabetically from A to Z or Z to A, 
or numerically from lowest to highest and highest to lowest. So, for example, in this table, the family names are not arranged. So, we would like to arrange uh, the names from A to Z. To do this, select the cells containing the family names. Okay. You don't need to include the label. Then, click on the sort and filter command. Click sort A to Z. When this dialog box appears, you make sure that expand the selection is selected so that the other names related to the family name will also be included. Then click sort. Now the names are arranged alphabetically. What if we want to arrange them by seat number? So it's the same procedure. Select the seat numbers. Click sort and filter command. Sort smallest to largest. Now it's arranged numerically from the lowest to highest. Just in case expand the selection is not appearing, you may select the whole range of cells containing the data. Though this will arrange it uh, from A to Z. Click sort and filter, sort A to Z. Okay, so if you check on it, properly arrange with uh, the corresponding first name and middle initials. In your computers, you may open multiple applications and shift from one program to another. Okay. We can see the open programs on our taskbar, okay, which is just at the bottom of the screen. So it's possible that while I'm working on Microsoft Excel, I can also open a document from Word. Okay. So I have opened Microsoft Excel a while back. And there's a document in Word which I need for my data. So to do that, I'll just have to click on my documents and then open the needed file. Okay, so in this Word document, there's a data and I would like to arrange this in a table so it's easier for me to analyze. So if you take a look at the taskbar, okay, to go back to Microsoft Excel, you just have to click on the icon. To go back to Word, just click on the icon again. Okay. You may also use your knowledge of copying and pasting so that you won't need to retype everything in your spreadsheet. For example, let's copy party supplies. Click copy. Then, go back to your spreadsheet program, select the cell where you want to paste it, then click Paste. You may just adjust the column width given the font size. There. We continue, go back to Word. By the way, the similar um, text here are your labels. Okay, so name of item, copy, paste. Quantity, that means the number.
you just have to do that until you uh, are able to copy all the data needed. Okay, good luck in your activity and I know you can do it.